So we had a major breakout on SPY above the ascending pattern. You can see here from last week, not only did the daily candle close above, but we also had the weekly candle close above, which just alone in itself uh, means that we did have confirmation of a breakout above this ascending pattern. Now, uh, this week is also crucial, especially if you are bullish for more upside, you're going to want to see another weekly close above here, uh, like I can show you right here on the weekly chart. A very bullish, at least weekly candle because the wick touched the lower end or right around this lower end of the ascending pattern that was able to close back above. Again, you do want to see confirmation above again this week in order to confirm that we stay up here at least throughout the rest of the month. Again, that doesn't negate the potential for downside in the future. However, from last week, bulls definitely made sure uh, to put down a clear signal to the bears and they are very much here still. Uh, so we did have this, at least for this week, technical breakout above. And I did mention last week uh, that we did have, first of all, a lot of heavy dark bull prints. And I'll get back to this VIX flow here uh, to show you guys because there was a ton on Friday. Uh, but we did have a lot of dark bull prints, especially the last couple weeks now all around that high like roughly 417 to 420 ish range we ended up closing the week as you can see here at around 428 so we're well above those my assumption that those prints were sells especially because of how extended we were mostly from this march time period but you could go back even further it just seems very unlikely that institutions were buying up um, around that 417 as you can see over here at a 420 ish level but as it seems right now we did have a weekly close above so if we're able to stay well above then i'd Admit that I was completely wrong about uh, there being a lot of sell pressure from back here. Again, seems unlikely uh, that you typically have a ton of dark bull prints, especially the magnitude that we were looking at. Like if you go back just any day from last week, for example, you'll see that there was a ton of premium. This 1.3 billion decent amount to have something over 1 billion, but at a consistent rate is what makes it pretty crazy. And this is probably the smallest we had all of last week. If you go just to another day here, the 31st, again, 5.5 billion in premium at the 420.17 level. So this is a ton. Again, this is about the largest SIG dark pool print that we've seen all year. Uh, so this is very, very large. And 42017 is still about eight bucks lower than where we closed on Friday. So again, seemed to me as we'd been going up that this is a form of distribution. There's still the potential that it could be. Uh, we'd have to see some form of a hard rejection uh, starting off this week to get back within the ascending pattern um, in order for this to be valid. And this would basically be some form of a blow off top uh, before continuing down because as of now, it did confirm some form of breakout. Also, for people that are perma bulls or just have been very bullish as of recently because of price action, this also just doesn't mean that we have to go straight to all time highs from here. You do have to be very careful about that. There still are a ton of other resistances between especially 430 as well as 35 all the way up until around this 440 range if it decides to go uh, that high. Again, not my expectation. However, we've been going up far further than I originally expected. Uh, so we do have to be careful of trying to chase this rally too. Never a good idea to chase, especially again, because we are very much overextended right now. Another thing I do want to note here, we did have a clean bounce off of this pennant that I had originally from back here. Uh, bears were unable to capitalize and bring price back under. So it was able to have a nice bounce above it. Uh, so far, we are extended from this area where we bounced off of. And another thing along with that simple Bollinger Band indicator uh, that you can see from over here uh, shows that we are well above the upper band right now. And characteristically, if you look back at previous times, for example, over here around the middle of May, we had a rejection. Once we touched the top over here around end of April, early May, once we hit the top here, we had also in a rejection. Again, it didn't mark an exact top uh, before a large down leg. However, it did did mark an area where we had a pullback very soon after. So both of these time periods, this acted as a spot before a pullback. And if you look back at previous times, again, over here, February 2nd, uh, this pivot high, we went above for one day and then we had that gap down and continue down afterwards. And right now, as you can see, we are well above this upper band, which in previous times, we only touched it and then had a hard rejection. So this over here is again, very much extended. Uh, the most similar data set we have would be uh, this February 2nd date. And we all know what happened after that doesn't mean that something has to happen where we go all the way back down like 250, 300 points uh, from that top period. However, it's something to note going into this week, especially is despite the overly bullish weekly close from last week, we are overextended and it just needs to at least some form of a cool off period for the S&P 500. Again, it doesn't mean that we have to start that down leg uh, from up here, but 
we're likely going to see some form of a pullback. And depending on price action, that could be a viable uh, short-term long setup. Again, I'm not interested in going long for an extended amount of time. Uh, we're still very much overextended. There's still a lot of other macro variables uh, that are taking place here that are pointing to a lot more downside in the future. So I'm still in that camp, not changing that up. But again, bulls were able to close above here, which is what I said in previous videos. If this were to be the case, uh, then we'd likely see price action stay elevated above here, especially into that June OPEX time period where we have supportive flows um, up until then. So just some things to note heading into this week. Another thing, like I shared with you earlier in the video, I did want to go over the VIX flow because this is a ridiculous amount of VIX flow. If we just filter for above 500,000 in premium, you could see here millions upon millions of out the money calls for the VIX. And this is only on Friday. So extremely rare to see this much flow in a week, let alone in a single day. Uh, so this is incredible here. A lot of this is protection. Again, going back to what I just showed you here on SPX, institutions know we are well above overextended right now, just based on the technicals. So because of that, they like to hedge their positions. VIX is an instrument that they can hedge those positions in, especially with how subdued volatility has been. And if you just go back over here and go to the VIX chart, you can see closing in the mid 14s is incredible. The last time that this happened is all the way back here in June of 2021. And also you could argue over here in October of 2021. If you remember on SPX what happened in October of 2021, uh, that was basically a mini blow off top uh, kind of thing that was preparation for the eventual all time high that we made. So back here, as you can see, we just continuously went up all the way until we had a little minor correction over here and then made one last high before that all time high uh, that we had just a tad above 4,800. Also, if you're looking at this and thinking, well, back here, we just continuously went along the upper Bollinger Band. You also have to remember that was a different time period where QE was still present, or at least the lasting effects of it were still present. Right now is the complete opposite. We still have QT going on, as some people seem to have forgotten. Um, and despite the fact that we're still going up in terms of price action, this is a very different market dynamic than we were seeing back in 2021 and 2020, et cetera. And that should be very clear just based on the macro backdrop uh, that we have here, just based on what the Fed's doing in terms of raising rates and then also uh, their QT obligations as well. So just keep that in mind. Very unlikely we see something similar to 2021 uh, just based on it is continuously going higher as the upper band uh, follows suit. But just wanted to make that point. Going back here to the VIX, we are all the way back at those levels now, now below those levels on the weekly close. So pretty insane that volatility has been this subdued uh, for this amount of time. It also brings a lot of risks if somebody were to be interested in taking a long position on the S&P. 500. Again, this is a technical breakout based on the weekly, but that doesn't suffice a long entry position, especially just based on where we closed on Friday. You most definitely want to see some form of a pullback. If it wants to continue up uh, from here and just continue with a rally in this major short squeeze, then so be it. A not good risk reward practice to try and chase this, especially because we know this is overextended with what I showed you here uh, before. Uh, but again, just keep that in mind going forward for this week. And typically, whenever you see a lot of a VIX exposure, for these calls that are being added, you tend to see some form of at least a minor pullback uh, soon after. Uh, there's no reason for institutions uh, to buy these unless they see some form of potential risk, hence why are they hedging here. And then potentially, they also may be taking a directional bet on some of these. Uh, but still something to note, especially because of how much we saw with the amount of premium and all of these were out the money as well. And urge you to continue watching VIXflow as we head into this week. Lastly, the dollar had a hard rejection from my supply zone up here. You can see right to the tick here of this key supply zone that I've showed you guys before on the daily chart. Uh, so we did have this hard rejection. However, if you go back over here to the hourly chart, you can see we had a very nice pickup to end Friday. And typically, especially with the Dow Jones, you see an inverse effect between the dollar and the Dow. Uh, so when the dollar sees a lot of strength, kind of like we saw on Friday here to end the day, you typically will see the inverse effect on the Dow. However, if you go over here to the Dow, just DIA, you can see that we did have a clean breakout and a very strong close to not only the daily chart, but also on the weekly candle. So what's key about this week is if the dollar remains strong as it is right now after the 6 p.m. Eastern open, then you'll likely see relative weakness in the Dow and the Dow slash IWM as well in terms of the Russell. Uh, those two indexes had a clean breakout last week, and that's kind of why we saw that major rally uh, in SPX. We saw that tech rally all of the last month, but SPX was reluctant to join because the Dow and Russell were relatively weak in comparison. So we saw the breakout on both the Dow and the Russell last week, which helped prop up SPX and have that clean breakout. However, if the dollar remains strong and can remain 
around this supply zone and better yet even break above the supply zone then we'll see a lot more weakness in the rest of the market because the Dow will be unable to stay above in this range and will be unable to hold this breakout uh, so keep that in mind going forward especially into this week continue to watch the dollar as well as the VIX because of how subdued that has been and other than that appreciate you guys watching this video I'll see you guys next time on Wednesday